Hey everybody, welcome to Camping with Steve. I have to thank everybody for getting this channel to a million subscribers. And to celebrate that, I'm out here at a provincial park, which sounds boring, except it goes right to the US border. And I think I can sneak back there and do a little camping. And of course I have with me, Crazy Neighbor. Uh, so that's a little bit better. I'd planned to film this last week, except there's a lot of bears in the area. Bears, bears, bears. So doing it on my own was not really a good thing. We've got another guy here with us that doesn't want to be in the video, uh, and that's okay. He is um, our help if we need it. He's got a radio, we got a radio, we got bear spray, a little horn um, to yep, scare them off, <laughs> if that works. But uh, with no further ado, let's go walk down to the border and see what all the fuss is about. And we're gonna ditch a little gear there so that we can uh, set up camp nice and easy. On the trail, out to the border, um, trying to keep the noise up a bit, because uh, there are bears in the area, we know for a fact. Black bears, so that's a good thing, but bears mean mom and cub, that's a bad thing. So, as long as we don't scare them, we should be okay. Follow the basic rules, um, hiking with more than one person, talking loudly, not walking into the wind, all those great things, and we got bear spray, etc. So. Let's uh, let the adventure begin. I don't see any berries. No, no signs of flowers. A couple of flowers. It's a pretty impressive chunk of rock. Yeah. We are exactly in a transition zone of where the plains start to hit the boreal forest over there. And that's where the bears are, is over there. And they could come out onto the plains, but they don't tend to get too far into the prairies because of all the agriculture around here. Uh, fences, uh, people protecting livestock, etc. So we're in the danger zone right now. Out in the cusp. <laughs> we're gonna keep talking here because this looks like exactly where you'd scare a bear. Here, we're coming out of the forest. Oh yeah. Wow, look at the sharp divide between the trees and the glass poles. Yeah, oh, I see the border. There you go. That looks like a Century 21 side. Just coming up to the Canada-US border, there's a little fence and there's a gate right through it. So let's go investigate. Oh, there's a camera. Oh, yeah. A barbed wire fence, I think. It's okay to go here because there's a gate and it doesn't say not to. Awesome. Okay, so I think this is what they call no man's land where there's a little strip they cut down the border. I can see it from here. We're not quite there yet. We got the sign to stop and there is a little border marker here. We got a sign there that pretty clearly says don't go any further. Uh, there's a camera attached to it that's making some clicking noises. And apparently they have cell service and we don't. So, got a beautiful bench here. Uh, looks like a memorial bench. I'm assuming we're allowed to sit on that because the uh, there's a trail that goes to it and there's nothing on the other side. Let's check out this bench here. Should I just camp on the bench? <laughs> uh, that's pushing it a little bit, but yeah, it's like really just over there. There's that's where the border is. I'm basically sitting on that cut line and the bench kind of seems to go half and half in between. There's a lock on the clicking camera and um, it says RCMP. I don't know. May not be US Customs and Border. That's the border. Let's see where we're gonna camp. There's this grove of trees that goes right up over there. And we're not gonna be right on the border. 
that's really asking for it because I don't know exactly where it is. But we're going to be close by, that's for sure. Haven't seen any bear evidence, uh, no droppings, not even any game trails going through the woods. So um, over in here, I think I'm going to ditch some of this gear. In through here, just going to do a quick, quick look around. This looks like it could be a good spot to set up a rudimentary shelter. Um, <laughs> Looks like large mammals actually bed down there all the time. Great. Mm -hmm. But I think in through here, we scare them off real good. Yeah. See, look at that. Oh, look on the other side of this over here too. I think that should have a nice little opening. Perfect. This is the perfect spot. I can see the border sign very clearly. Um, I can see the trails on that side, probably from U.S. Border Patrol. And we're going to see if our radio works. Testing, uh, can you read me? I'm at uh, the drop-off spot. Here's hoping. Yes, uh, coming through the clutch. Awesome. Roger. Okay, great. So we'll dump this gear here, get back to camp, uh, kind of go over some of the gear and the plan, cook some dinner, then we'll crawl back out here. Sleeping bag. Tough. Camel. Of course, it doesn't help that what we're doing makes it look like we're going to do a run for the border in the middle of the night. But, uh, all right. We know better than to do that. Back at the campground, and there's been bear sightings. Uh, the park operator actually came by to say there's a black bear and a brown bear. Now, brown could mean grizzly, or it could mean a brown colored black bear. There Two completely different things. So, we're going, you got bear spray. I got bear spray in a holster. I got bear spray in holster, so we got those. We're gonna have uh, an air horn. We actually got another one somewhere. We're bringing these two packs right to the international border um, with the rest of the stuff we need to sleep comfortably for the night. And we'll have a radio here left with uh, local blogger, CM Calgary, uh, who doesn't want to be on camera. He's kind of like an anonymous blogger so um, with all this set up we're pretty much ready to go we want to cook the food here um, or make our food so that we don't end up stinking up the campsite like with food because <laughs> yeah, no. there's bears and if they're in the campsite uh, they may be out there uh, actually probably a lot more possibly uh, so we're gonna be as careful as possible um, little liquid courage um, goes a long way it does. Um, in grizzly country. So let's, uh, I guess, start a fire and uh, start throwing together um, some subs because we're having subs. Um, got a million subs. Might as uh, well have subs. <laughs> thanks to all you guys. So it's subs tonight. Terrified I'm going to just hit this horn and freak everybody out. So put that over there. That is so much safer, but less entertaining than um, Molotov cocktails. Making subs, something nice and easy. Unfortunately, this is what they call sub buns at a grocery store. Look at these things. That's like... It's pathetic. That, barely a six inch sub. Yeah. They sell these cannons. Look at this. White bread. Oh yeah, that's a big long sandwich. Get a couple of those made up. You got a first aid kit? Uh, I should have brought that. Hmm. A brand new knife, really. <laughs> Just out of the package. Look at that. Various meats in this thing. I think I've seen it done at Subway so many times that I could probably pull it off, like actually go into work and uh, fill in for somebody at a shift. And this is like the prime time that I would expect a bear to come stampeding out of the, the woods. 
got like a two dollar off coupon on this uh, Burns brand pepperoni. Going with Swiss. sub sauce now this stuff is basically just Italian dressing but they call it sub sauce there we go million subs calls for a sub and uh, crazy neighbor would you like to come and have the first bite of the million subscriber sub I certainly would all right okay well let's cut that that puppy in half all right and uh, I'll just wait for me yeah. There's people crying right now whether we're going to cut this monster in half. I'm sure of it. Okay. But that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to take the big piece. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Cheers. Mm. We're making a break for the border now. Um, it is bear hour, prime bear time. And this is like right where it was spotted. So um, we're feeling brave. Let's uh, try to make as much noise as we can going through these woods. Some people out here. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I'll just look at this park here for a second because we got to walk right past them. Yeah, I don't think they're park operators, but we want to be careful. So, of course, the usual gig we're photographers. Heading into the worst possible stretch of woods at the worst possible time of day, but fortunately, not alone. If it wasn't for the bears, this would seem a lot easier, but the combination of a double whammy of bears and border security, from both sides possibly, makes it a little riskier. We're just at the fork in the road here. Uh, the border is real close, you know, probably another minute of walking. We're going to ditch the backpacks before we get anywhere close to that camera because it would really make things look like we're doing something untoward. This is the freaky part. If you've seen Grizzly Man, this looks like the Grizzly Maze. So we'll try to stay um, loud, because uh, that's really good until we get closer to the border. Then that's really bad. Let's just talk about stupid things. Like, what, what did you take that uh, Beastie Boys reunion, Steve? Uh, that was uh, actually not a bad film. <laughs> All right, there's the border. Found our little trail here. And uh, let's get tucked in here. All right, sounds good. Really good soft ground here, but definitely thermocell time. That will help keep bugs away. And hopefully bears might smell it and understand it's something unusual they should not be curious about. Really, really light setup. No tent, no hammocks. Tarp on the ground. A couple of air mattresses. Some sleeping bags. And we'll tarp in the rest as we see necessary. It doesn't look like there's any threat of rain. But if there is, we've got another tarp we can stay on. I'm not using a light right now. I just want to come out towards that border and see how obvious this little light we have on in there is. It can be seen, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it's just a little bit here till we get it set up. I think things are going to be all right. This is the stealthy setup. Um, there's camo netting behind us. A widow maker over top that we can dangle a tarp off if it starts to rain but it's not looking very likely. That's kind of why we chose a spot like this is so that we could enclose it if it rains. We got foamies, mattresses, a ground sheet. And what's that by your left hand? A uh, little bit of step two. Our first official step two of the trip. 
yeah, let's uh, dig into uh, this here. And uh, give a big shout out to um, everybody who's followed along. You do the honors, please. Cheers. And of course, <laughs> we're going to go walk over to the border. Yeah. What could go wrong, right? I know there are border patrols, of course. There's drones flying over, I'm sure. Thermal imaging drones, uh, that type of thing. I'm going to see just how obvious it feels at night. We're heading back up to the border in the middle of the night. Um, I can't stress this enough. Don't do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know stealth camping, stealth camping. Let's go as extreme as we can. But uh, yeah, don't do anything like this. We're just going to walk back up. Oh, my. Go through the fence in the middle of the night, um, right up to where Canada meets uh, the United States of America. And what could go wrong? The only reason we're doing this is we've seen no activity. Um, we thought there'd be like drones flying over top and all that stuff. Not the case. Um, it's completely, uh, completely desolate out here. Yeah. I'm really glad there's no big border wall that would wreck the view. <laughs> it would. Sitting out here, literally, on the Canada-US border, I feel a lot more comfortable about bears. It's clear in every direction here. We can see anything coming. And I'm a little more concerned about bears than I am about border security. You know, we're not entering the States. Um, a border security guard, if we're far enough on this side, they can't actually like come and drag us into the States for being this close. So I think we're going to bring the sleeping bags up here and like sleep like directly on the border tonight. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. All Absolutely. right. I'm not trespassing. We're not trespassing. We're just sleeping literally directly on the Canada US border on the Canadian side. So let's let this happen. Filming the same thing here. We got a thermal cam on Crazy Neighbor and the real cam. And we're going to see what it looks like from the, uh, from the spot. So if you want to get back in. Okay. I'm going to see what it looks like from out here. Okay, so thermal, actually thermal and visual. I've lost uh, all sight of him there. Okay, you're right at it. Like, I can, I can uh, not see you. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And come on out on the other side. And we'll see when I can see you because we're going to see you on. Uh... Oh, yeah, I saw you. Yeah, now I can see you coming through. Um, wow. When we get up to the border, I'll sneak across. You throw the sleeping bags over the fence. Alrighty. Okay, sweet.
catch anything on it. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Huddle up to the Canada US border. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay, this can't even be called stealth camping because there is nothing stealthy about that. Crazy neighbor. Morning. Morning. Uh, beautiful day. Beautiful day so far. Uh, actually, not a bad sleep. Despite, uh, you know, being on the ground um, at Canada-US border. Um, and they piled a bunch of rocks here. I think that's how they used to know in the old days where the border was. It was a big pile of rocks. So, um, I don't know. Probably the prudent thing to do would be to get up um, before we raise too much suspicion. Because, yeah, there's, like, a, like, well within view of this camera attached to that sign. And uh, there's a walking trail right here from the campground. And the good people of the world get up early in the morning. So, probably time to pack up and, I don't know, I'd, I'd love to sleep in. But this is neither the time nor the place. Solid. It is, uh, it's not solid, it's, it's hollow. Yeah. But, yeah, like, you can totally see that really strange clear cut just buzzed right through the woods um, in all directions and that goes right across uh, the international boundary pretty much right across Canada anywhere in the woods top of the mountains uh, I google earth this like looking for this spot for like, two years and uh, this is about the best I could get to uh, others are up like some winding mountain logging road uh, and I'm sure they're less patrolled than this, but this way, I know where to stop. I'm not going to accidentally um, film myself uh, well within the Montana border. All you need in this world is a good sleeping bag and a pile of rocks to put it on. <laughs> and balls of steel. <laughs> Well, that went, uh, that went far better than I anticipated. Uh, nothing at all. Not a little surveillance drone, not somebody patrolling, and, like, literally... No Mountie riding on his horse over top of the hill? Yeah, there's, like, nothing here. Not encouraging anybody to do this. Um, again, do not do this. Your borders may vary. Uh, however, <laughs> it's, uh, um... I, I'm thrilled. Uh, what a perfect 
what a perfect camp for a million subscribers yeah. uh, that, you know, we actually had a peaceful sleep under the stars at the Canada-U.S. border. Like, and I mean, at the border, we initially thought in the, in the bushes over there, because that was pretty close. And uh, <laughs> why not? Why not do it right, I guess? Yep. Okay. And for the record, yes, we never walked into Montana. We don't want to um, mess around with, um, like, a seriously illegal um, border entry. <laughs> Right. <coughs> Goodbye, Canada US border, but yeah, there's like a morning vehicle coming through in the area. So perfect timing. <laughs> okay. This is like a really good spot. Um this is the best stealth spot that I never actually used. It's uh, darn near perfect. A great day when you don't get busted by international border police. Oh, now all there is left to the game is getting all this stuff back to the camp without getting devoured by a bloodthirsty grizzly bear. I don't see anything left behind other than trampled grass. It's the way I like it. Since we've already committed the crime of the century and got away with it, I'm not adverse to uh, packing up right on the trail here because nobody in the right minds is up this early. We're gonna be able to do this in one trip, I think. I think we are. I'm loaded. Yeah, here we go. Got my bear spray, you got your bear spray? Sure do. Make a little noise. Of course, we're making this journey um, on the way in and on the way out during bear hour. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the, the chunk of woods that always uh, freaks me out. I suppose we should uh, be talking to scare him off. Yeah, sure second time trying to film this video, and second time's the charm. It's about six hours one way, and this is uh, going to be about 20 plus hours of driving, uh, which I don't mind. I love driving. But. Uh, yeah, sadly, last time I was out, I, I'm so much happier this time. Way better prepared. Um, had the radios, had people with me, and actually got so bold as to camp directly on the border <laughs> instead of tucked away stealthing it. Thank you so much for coming and uh, being a part of this uh, crazy neighbor. Oh, love being here. All right. This looks like the bear zone for sure. This is the bear zone. Yeah. Actually, I know because... Uh, this is where they reported it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe we didn't get arrested or die. Uh, how about you? It was uh, <laughs> different. <laughs> different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, of course, we have to thank uh, the people that have supported the channel, of course. Uh, a million so, subs. Uh, yes, a million subs. Um, Thank you to everybody. Thank you to uh, uh, everybody. Like, I can't believe it. I still, um, at heart, feel like a small channel. And I know that ship has sailed. Um, but, like, I, I get to as many of the comments as I can. And, you know, they're all, they're all heartwarming, mostly. There's, some people aren't that heartwarming. But most are, 99.9%. .9%. So, um, thanks, everybody, for... Um, watch and subscribing um, and I gotta just do a plug right now if you're uh, um, if you're into this type of thing please consider subscribing talk it over with your family 
your loved one. Just see what you guys all think. Uh, and then, you know, just click on it. And if you've, uh, if you've been subscribed for a while and these videos are just getting boring for you, I wouldn't be offended if you unsubscribed. So I just would rather that you did that than to complain or anything. But constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get everything packed up here. Um, get out of here and uh, let the next few videos begin because we're back to the acreage for a while. So um, I think I've done a lot of stealth videos lately. Um, I like to do a mix. And there's, so like the next three coming up are not going to be stealth. I'm just going to warn you right now. I probably, that just cost me some subscribers. But <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the next three, what we have planned is there is one special project at the acreage, then there's another, uh, the railway, and then we're on the river for a river trip. And we are going to run some tests to see how long that trip's going to go. It might be a week, might be two. Uh, I don't really want to be longer than two weeks because uh, I, I'm a married man and <laughs> I, I've got my limitations as far as uh, going on. That I can't go on alone or anything like that for, well, I wouldn't know what I'm doing and I'd tap out on the first day but um, I also uh, couldn't be gone for a long length of time okay is the rambling done I think we're done rambling <laughs> All right. so uh, thanks everybody uh, so much um, I hope you hope you had fun on this video I know I sure did as soon as I got over the fear of um, the bloodthirsty ravenous grizzly bears roving around and the uncontrollable uh, border patrol guards that uh, were in my imagination. I watched too much of those uh, border security shows. I thought they'd be running into Canada and dragging me back into the States. Uh, and me we into saw you. <laughs> but uh, now you know. And yeah. yeah, it's. Some people may not realize the US border with Canada is like that. It's uh, a little different. There's, there's no wall that would wreck the view. No. So, cheers, everybody. We'll see you next week.